Howdy once again, it's Mr. Pete, your YouTube shop teacher, sitting here next to the closing mill, and this is number three of a series of videos I've been doing on cutting key seats into shafts. Today, just a little bit different in that I'm going to cut a woodruff key that is a half moon key into this three quarter shaft to hold this three inch pulley onto the shaft, keep it from turning, so let's get started. There are several advantages to a woodruff key over a straight key or a square key, so I'll cover that in related information at the end of the video for those that are interested. I'm not going to tell you how I made the calculations here, I'll just tell you what the numbers are. But again, a woodruff key is sometimes called a half moon key. There's the key slot, keyway, key seat, with the key in place. Alright, that's the three-quarter shaft. 0 0.750 in diameter. The cutter is a number 607 cutter. So the cutter has to correspond in size to the key. And the key again is 3 sixteenths wide and it is 7 eighths in diameter if it was a full circle. You get these at any hardware store. Again, here's the information. I often write it down right on the milling machine or the lathe, even when I'm not doing a demonstration. It's just nice to have it in a written form so you don't forget. It's a three-quarter shaft. There's the key size and the key number. And, of course, the cutter is also a number 607. The set over after I touch off is .468 and the depth, and it's a plunge cut, is 0.276. I'm going to run the cutter at about 400 RPM, and there will be no power feed because I am feeding up in the z-axis, that is, I'm raising the knee, and there is no power feed for that, so it's strictly by hand. The first thing I need to do is find the edge, so I'm just going to come in and touch, and I'm going to use paper. This is actually cardstock, and for your information, this cardstock is 7,000 thick, so I think I'll compensate for that. Tape might be less, probably is less, or regular typing paper, but I will just bring the cutter into the work without the machine running until it drags. Okay, now I am seven thousandths away from the work. And I'll quickly drop the table. And I need to move it in now. The set over a 468 plus seven thousandths, so that's a total of 475 thousandths. I realize I've shown this in all of the videos, but years from now, this might be a standalone video where someone hasn't watched the other ones. I've set the collar to zero, and I'm going to move it 475. One, two, three, four, and 75, and lock the table. Now you can clearly see I'm on the center line of the shaft. I need to touch off again, and you can use paper if you want, but I do find the tape to be quite satisfactory for that purpose. And with the spindle turning, I will now raise the table until it scratches the tape. I'm very close to it right now. All right, did you see that I touched off? I checked the thickness of the green tape with a micrometer as four thousandths thick, and if you remember the depth of cut here now is 276, but I'll add the four thousandths onto that, so the total depth of the plunge cut is 280 thousandths. Can I talk just a little bit about safety? Make sure that you have your safety glasses on, get everything clear away from the spindle, concentrate on what you're doing, Think of the dangers involved, and let's get to work. You need to locate 
exactly on the shaft where you want that uh, key seat to be. So I put two little black marks there. That's about where I want to be. It's not too critical. So I'll just find about the center of that, which is right about there, and I will lock the table in the x-axis. So the table's locked in two directions, and I'm going to feed again up. And I'm ready to cut now. I'm actually four thousandths away from the work, remember, and be sure and use some cutting oil. And the collar on the knee crank is set to zero. It's pretty corroded here and hard to read. And remember that each revolution on this machine is only fifty thousandths. And I'm ready to cut. And there I am to full depth. And that didn't take long. I decided to back the cutter away and take a reading on it. Now the key is installed and the dimension that I'm looking there for, according to the little black book, and the calculations is 843,000 so you can see I'm about one thousandth off but you have a tolerance here of a few thousandths each way so now I'm going to take it out of there and make sure that the pulley fits and you might have to file a burr off there's not much of a burr because this is a very sharp cutter matter of fact it's a brand new cutter except for the other video that I made KBC by the way Make sure that your key seat is clean, no chips in there when you assemble. And I like to tilt it a little bit like that. It's easier to get it started. Now the thing I like about a Woodruff key is that it can't get away. Let, visualize this being on a machine and you got a belt on there. Sometimes a key, square key, works its way out and then uh, the pulley will slip. This can never work its way out even if the set screw becomes uh, loosened. Also, this is a little bit safer because you can't snag any clothing or a rag in there. Often there's a little bit of a square key that's sticking out and would love to grab something that's loose. So I think they're a little safer, but that maybe is debatable. All right, I can take the work out. And I think I'll take the cutter out also so that when we go down to the bench, I can talk a little bit about it. One disadvantage here is there is no flat on uh, these cutters that uh, would prevent it from spinning with the set screw because there is a set screw right here as you can see. You could grind one if need be. Now this is related information, free of charge, essentially the video is over, the lesson is over, but if you want to learn a few other things, stick around with me, but in the 30th edition here of Machinery's Handbook, I believe there's a lot more information on key seats and keyways than there is in some of the older editions. For instance, in this table you will find the size key that is needed for a certain shaft size.
if it's not included in your drawing or your repair job. And there's two pages that are devoted to information on woodruff keys entitled Key Seat Dimensions for Woodruff Keys, all according to shaft size or key size. Now here's two woodruff keys that are 7 eighths diameter, but notice they're different thicknesses. That's a quarter inch, that's 3 sixteenths thick, that's the one I use, that's the one I cut the key seat for because a quarter inch is too thick for that shaft size and that's why you need to look it up in a book. If you go to the hardware store they're going to have selections like this of the keys, Woodruff keys, but this is an older selection before they were using the standardized numbers that they're using right now, but the arrow was pointing there to a WK11 3 16 by 7 8 which is what I used, but the current number or name for that is the number 607 for both the key and the cutter. So get yourself a selection of keys like this, both in straight and woodruff. They're handy to have around in the shop. Now here's how I arrived at the set over. The 93 thousandths there is half the thickness of the 3 16 key. And then the point three seven five is the radius of the shaft. Add them together and we had point four six eight for the set over. The proper depth for a key that size is 0.276. And where did I find that depth without any calculating? Machinery's handbook right at the tip of the arrow, 0.276. And there are some key cutters that I have in stock, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Of course I didn't have the one that I needed. And here's the one that I used. See the number on there, 607? And there is the size, 7 eighths by 3 16 right hand. Well, there it is, and that's how you cut a Woodruff key seat and a three-quarter shaft. Hope you liked the video. This is Tubal Cain saying so long for now.